everyone. Welcome to our Breakfast Club call. It is Thursday, January 19, 2023. I'm super excited. Thank you. Shout out to Delicia for starting our call with such great energy, enthusiasm, positivity. Um, as always, when we're looking forward to these calls, it's not only to starting the day with greatness, with great information and tools and resources that are not only going to allow us to grow in our businesses, but grow in our lives, but it's also to start the day with positivity because how you start the day sets the tone for your day and how we love to say garbage in is greatness out and pardon me i am in my car i had a 7 a.m uh breakfast networking with my church and a lot of the business owners and entrepreneurs here in the tampa market super super fun things i want to sleep super late up early you know that's just the grind that's just how it is but Plans Change Decisions Don't definitely was committed um, to growing in this community. And I know that it comes with a lot of serving. So I'm excited. And, you know, the things that we always recommend on the calls, I'm not a person that just recommends it or talks about it. I am definitely a person that lives about it. So I, um, I'm i excited. I know Delisa was talking about all of our takeaways from the SRT. We had such an incredible, incredible weekend. We had such great um, trainings and all over, and we have our Club Fit Challenge that just launched. Uh, 50 50. If there's one thing, you know, one of my biggest takeaways from this SRT that we just had was what Troy said is that um, the world needs a hero, right? The world needs a hero, and why not us? You know, why not you? Why not I? And another thing was the 50 um, the 50 having 2020 vision. So, if you have no idea what having 2020 vision is, write it in the chat for me. I know somebody's like, I have no idea what 2020 vision. It's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to send it. So having 2020 vision is the following. It's saying, hey, I'm gonna have 20 people on my left team, 20 people on my right team that each have 50-50. If you don't know what 50-50 is, that it says, hey, listen, I have. Um, $50 worth of product that I am spending every month or I have on subscribe and save, which is our auto ship program. And I have an active club secret membership for $50 every single month. Now, the beautiful thing about having that is just because our company rewards loyalty, right? Com uh, membership has its privileges. Everybody that keeps that for a year on your year anniversary, you're going to be rewarded with another getaway, which is insane value. I mean, it's crazy the options that we have, thousands of places to choose from all over the world. And you get to bring people with you. Some of them is like $50 and the retail value of it is almost $6,000. And you're talking about $50 and you've taken up to six people. It's insane value, but you guys all know that 20 is saying, hey, um, hopefully I was not on mute the entire time. Uh, 2020 is saying, hey, I, am, I have 20 people on my left, 20 people on my right that have 50-50. And that's having 20-20 vision. And here's the reality, right? Um, and Jesse alluded to this on the call. If, and so did Muzaffar on the call that we had um, earlier this week. Just calling your teammates, right? If I think that, you can compartmentalize that in the sense that you can say, hey, I can have 20 people left, 20 people right. Well, let me just start with five. Can we start with five? If you're like, Pam, you know, I don't even have five people on my team. Start with one. Start with where you're at, right? Start with one. Start with two. But start making those phone calls because when you see that it's, it's, a, it's very, I always say this to my clients when it's like any type of social media marketing or building your digital blueprint. Whenever you see a platform drops a new feature, use that feature because the algorithm is going to favor the people that use those features. Like they're just going to push out your content because you're utilizing the feature. Well, it's the same exact thing here. Whenever you see that a company is pushing something, if they're pushing a program or an incentive it is for a reason success leaves clues so it's important that if we're really wanting to capitalize on everything that the company is doing they're putting a lot of emphasis on this 50 50 so if i were you 
and I'm on the phone and whether I just got started, I would say, hey, how can I get 50-50 and how can I get 20-20 vision, which means 20 people left, 20 people right that have 50-50. Are we good on that? Did you guys get that type of one in the chat if that made some type of sense? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, 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 yes. Great, 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 great. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Awesome, awesome. So I wanted to talk uh, really quick. You know, we've been talking about just kind of as leaders, it's important that we get back to basics. It's important that, you know, Matt Morris, we had dinner for breakfast last week and we had him on the call. And I know Delicia opened up the call sharing a lot of the gems from the SRT where he was talking about um, mindset and talking about making sure that you know that you have everything in you. Like we have everything in us to win, that we have, we are made up of everything that is required to achieve the level of greatness, to, to know that that is true about you, to know that you can do this and you will do this. And you're coming fresh out of SRT, and you're super excited and life happens, right? And a lot of times it's like you're, whether you're calling people, whether you're attending networking events, whether you are doing the mundane and mastering the mundane and you're doing the income producing activities and you're doing those things that are going to allow you to grow your business and doing those things that are going to allow you to grow so that you can grow your business. Because the reality is, is that you build people and people build the business. That's, that's pretty much how it goes. But you also have to build ourselves. And there's something that's important when we're talking about, you know, the thoughts on discipline. I believe that discipline, it has to be a part of our lifestyle. I believe that it has to be something that's embedded in you because there's no such thing as you feeling uh, disciplined all the time or you, you feeling, you know, it's, it's doing what you're called to do even when you don't want to do it. And that's why it's always, what's my calling? You know, am I focusing more on my calling or am I focusing more on the circumstance? Because when you're very clear, when you're very, very crystal clear on what your calling is, when you're very crystal clear on what your purpose is, you're going to say, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter what's happening. This too is going to promote me. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now because my calling is not dependent on my current condition. My calling is not dependent on my current circumstance. My calling is not, it's not dependent on the capacity in which I feel that I can perform right now. My calling is based on my calling. It's based on that thing, that burning desire that I have within me that I know is going to come to fruition, that I know that God planted seeds and they've been getting watered long enough that I know is going to happen. But a lot of times we're excited, and then life happens and we're just like, the conditions, like we're being real, right? The conditions is like, eh, I don't know if I feel like it, you know, or I don't feel I have the capacity right now or, or this happened and, you know, it, it, it doesn't, I, I'm not feeling the best. Anybody been there? I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Tap it in the chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And it's knowing that, okay, you know what, when you're doing your best to do your best and absolutely Lisa, I agree. Having that clarity of your purpose, having that clarity of your calling is essential, but it's also knowing that when you're building this discipline muscle, when you're building this, this idea of mastering the mundane, right? It's saying also, hey, you know what? It requires rest because when you're restless, you react. When you're rested, you respond. When you're restless, you react. When you're rested, you respond. Your girl's been very adamant 
very disciplined about getting seven to eight hours of sleep every single day. And I noticed even in anything that I'm doing, it's like, I am excited to wake up. I am excited to go conquer the task at hand. I am excited to go meet people at the crack of dawn. I am excited to go get a 5 a.m. workout in. I am excited to conquer the day. I am excited to take on those things that I have no idea I can even take on because I'm rested. And when you're restless, you react, but when you're rested, you respond. And I will tell you that when we think of, of times, can anybody think of a time that you're like, man, I wish I would have got more rest. Can anybody relate to that? Type of, type of one, like, can anybody say, maybe if I would have got better sleep, I wouldn't have responded like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have came upside my neck like that. Like, is that just me? No, 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 exactly. There's a lot of ones in the chat, right? There's a lot of ones. And I'm going to tell you, it's people here from all types of demographic calling in from all places of the world. We got all genders represented, all cultures, okay? And why is that? Because rest is something, it, it's, it goes, it bypass, it goes across, okay? Genders and relationships and religions and all of these things and cultures, it transcends all of these things. Why? Because it's universal. And that's what time is. And a lot of times we want to give our calling time. We want to give our business time. We want to give everything else time, but we're not giving ourselves time. We're not giving our body time. And as we are going into this club fit challenge, yes, it's important for everybody to be participating. We need all hands on deck. We need all hands on deck as yes, the world needs a hero. Why not you? Why not me? Why not us? The company needs us to perform. The company has our back. They have all of these things lined up for us to build such a solid foundation to continue to build on what's already a solid foundation but we gotta rest we have to rest we have to rest because the amount of rest that we have is going to determine how you respond in those times and it's easy i'm gonna tell you right now okay it's easy to respond it's easier to react. It's easy to respond, but it's easier to react because you don't got to think about it. And here's the reality, right? We all have triggers. We all have, we all have things that you're like, why is that bothering you? Like when something triggers me or when it can be, it can be, I'm driving and somebody will cut me off. And then I have to pause and be like, why did that, why did that trigger me? Why, why? And it's like having that level of awareness is like, okay, well, I, I have to keep, I need to do a little bit more work here. But the truth of the matter is that we all have those triggers, but it's, are you going to react or are you going to respond to it? And it's a choice. It's a choice to be able to respond. And I love that Delisa was talking about mindset because we we're just having a conversation about how powerful your affirmations and your incantations. And I was reminded of that this week. And a lot of times when you're in this business, you have to put your emotions to the side and you have to compartmentalize, just like you compartmentalize your faith, your, fa your family, your fitness, your fortune with fun. And we, and we break down the five areas of our life. It's also compartmentalizing your emotions, compartmentalizing the things that they're not serving you in that moment, because you could be, here's the reality. I want to talk to my people that, Anybody in here? I, I think the majority of you guys, right, have had a job before. We've all had a job. Type of one in the chat. If you've all had a job, you've all had a nine to five. Yes, yes, yes. Let me see where my work is at. Ew, yes, yes, yes. Me too, me too, me too, me too. Since the age of 14 years young. Yes, 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 yes. So here's why I say this. Because how many times did we feel bad or have a have a death in the family, or you're sick, but you went to work. How many people in here still went to work? 
Like, I want to see a one in the chat. If you've ever gone to work, but you was sick, you lost somebody, you had a death in your family, type of one in the chat. You ain't feel like it. After a car accident, Delicia, I know the feeling, girl. Yes, Lisa. Well, who else? Yes, Mitchie. Yes, 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 yes. So we go to work when we're sick. We go to somebody else's job when we're not feeling good. We go to somebody else's job when we're experiencing loss. We go to somebody else's place of business to drive revenue, to help them increase their profits. When we're not feeling good. Oh, so that is more important than us chasing our dreams. The responsibility takes over, Mitchie, that's right. But you know what? It's also because we live in a world where the society has conformed us to the mediocrity and also to say, to conform to the norm that even if I'm sick, even if I'm tired, even if I'm hurt, even if I feel broken, even if I'm in pain, I'm gonna still go show up to my job, but I'm not gonna go show up to my dreams. I'm not gonna go fight for my dreams. I'm not gonna go fight for the stuff that I believe in. I'm not gonna go fight for legacy. I'm not gonna go fight to get this residual income because it's not about the residual income. It's about the residual blessings. It's about the residual memories. You guys hear me talk about this often that it's like, yes, as tough as it is, that it's gonna be two years that my mom went to be with God. I thank God for the amount of memories, the thousands amount of memories and pictures because those are residual blessings. The impact that you have on people's lives, residual blessings. The relationships that you're able to make here, residual blessings, right? The memories that you get to create around the world, residual blessings, residual memories. But the truth of the matter is that we're able to say, hey, you know what? I could I could put my feelings to the side because I got to go get this check. Chase that check, right? Chase that, run that check up. I'm, I have to go do that real quick. It's, it's important because I got a job, but that your dreams are not as important. Our legacy is not as important. Your kids having access to you 24 7, 365 is not that important. So it's like we choose. What are those things that we're giving the sense of importance to, really? So it's important for us to be rested so that we can respond. Because I'm gonna tell you, there's going to come times that even when you think you've mastered, you, you have said, you know what? There's no type of way that like, what else could I deal with in this industry or in life that can be harder than, you know, and I know that there's people that have lost children, that have lost siblings. And I know that you're, when you experience some type of loss, you're lost significant others. And I'm like, you know, what can be harder than this? And God has a very, very funny way of testing you. And one day I'll train about that specific incident from stage. But I'm not going to get into the specifics. But all I will tell you is that you got to master. You have to be a master at compartmentalizing your emotions, at knowing when to turn it on and turn it off. Because what you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. Whatever it is that you're giving meaning to, it's what's going to be meaningful. It's what's going to consume you. That thought, when we, when we say, you know, you could change your thoughts, change your life. Yes, because your mindset is where your mind sits. And a lot of times, us, we self-sabotage. We cause ourselves to self-sabotage by the thoughts that we allow to consume us, by the emotions that we allow to consume us that are not conducive to our growth, that are not conducive to the next level of life, let alone the next level in your business. So let's let's keep talking on this, all right? Uh, <laughs> number two, don't underestimate daily. So when we're thinking about discipline and we're thinking about making it a part of our lifestyle and we're thinking about you know mastering those mundanes, what you do daily defines who you become permanently. What you do daily defines who we become permanently. So when I know that, 
because I know that, and, and the mind is a very powerful thing, right? Because a lot of times, has anybody on here been ever scared to do something? Like, have you ever been scared to do something? Like anybody, anybody ever been, you're like, I don't want to jump. I'm going to tell you all right now, your girl's afraid, your girl's afraid of heights. I don't like, I don't like it. Even when I was in the military, I had to repel off a tower. My sergeant's like, Pacheco, hurry up. Now you're going to give me a hundred pushes. I'm like, okay, fine. Right. I'm like repelling. I'm it's not it's not my it's not my thing. It's like mm, it's not my jam. It's not my jam. So if we're ever at a theme park and you're like, oh, come, let's jump. I'm probably going to say no. Like, I'm probably going to say no. Yeah, I'm probably going to say no. So, yes, yes. It's OK. Mitchie laughs. Mm -hmm. It's OK. Uh, but that's your girl. Like, just so you all know, like we're clear. It's OK. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of who I am. OK, um, but I do love adventure. I do love having fun with my friends. I love creating memories and I love creating experiences. But here's what I do know, that if I ever let fear consume me, I am going to walk in fear my entire life. And fear means nothing more than false evidence appearing real. It could tell you forget everything and run, or it could tell you face everything and rise. And what I've learned is that daily, what I do becomes who I am permanently so even when it comes to me mastering things like fear of heights I do little things every day that I said I can push myself because I can do anything I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that's just something that I decide to do and why is that so you'll see that why it's because I always want to be able to go on different adventures so when we were in Peru we climbed up 17,000 feet in Rainbow Mountain. Absolutely insane experience, must do. We rode ATVs up the side of the mountain and your girl was like this, right? But I've been telling myself for so long that I can do anything that I was like, I got this. And I'm smiling, I'm like, I'm gonna go in the front of y'all. Y'all can, can follow me, I got this, right? but it's because of how much I've conditioned my mind and the things that we do day in and day out define who we become permanently. It's have you ever said the presentation so many times that when you're doing a presentation, it just rolls off your tongue. See, and you will notice that the more you master the mundane, the more you master these little things, that's really what separates the successful people from the unsuccessful people. You know, in the book, The Slightest Edge by Jeff Olson, he talks about, you know, it's about taking, and we, and we spoke about this a few weeks ago, it's about taking advantage of the opportunity within the lifetime of the opportunity, within the lifetime of this phenomena. And I believe that that's where we're at. And those little things that we do day in and day out, whether it's following up with customers, whether it's setting time to go prospect, whether it's getting up at the crack of dawn to go network, whether it's you going out to, you know, being intentional with your kids' extracurricular activities and saying, I'm going to be more involved with the parent teacher association and I'm going to be like minded parents. I'm going to go, whatever that looks like, it's about doing it over and over and over and over and over again. But it's because what are we doing daily? It's going to define who we become permanently. A lot of people see my workouts like, oh my God, girl, that's intense. Ah, this is crazy. Yeah, it's, it's super intense, super intense. But I've been doing it almost two years with a personal trainer. I listen, day one, please. And there's days that if you, if you read my stories, because my story community gets something different than my post community, right? There's days that you'll see me post my workouts and I got tears, right? And you'll see, my, you'll see my story and I'll be like, yes, I just had to cry my eyes out before this workout today. But you know what? It's all good because I know I could conquer all things. I know I could do all things. I know everything comes from. And these are things that it's, it's what I'm doing daily. It's because I am very mindful of who I'm becoming permanently. What I'm choosing to speak over my faith what I'm choosing to speak over my family, the things the what am I choosing to subscribe to on a daily basis? What are you choosing to subscribe to on a daily basis? What are those daily things right now that you're doing that are saying, hey, you know what? 
this is what I'm doing that I'm becoming permanently. And ask yourself, what are those things that I'm doing daily in my business that I want to implement permanently? Because if you're doing everything, awesome. But if you're not, here are a few things that you may want to incorporate into having daily things, right? Income producing activities, work on your mindset, whether it's you listening to a motivational audio, you listening to a YouTube video, you listening to something motivational, something inspirational, right? Again, keep, keep yourself surrounded with greatness. And it's like, you know, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, sometimes I don't have mentors. Tim Rohn was my mentor for years before I ever even met him. Like, Les, Les Brown, and I never met him, right, obviously, but Les Brown, my mentor for years before I ever met him in person. Great, like uh, Eric Worre, mentors from afar. These people that you're listening to over and over and over again, don't sign up for that class, right? You don't know, the birds gonna get some of them, but you, you listen to it over and over and over and over and over again, right? So it's like, those are just little things. Work on your mindset. We have calls every single day. Um, Jared Ojeda, Josh Valentine, Dewey Sachs, uh, Jesse McPherson. We have calls every day to help us grow, to help us grow because there's tools and resources that are available to just help us be better, help us do better, right? Um, what are so? What are some things that you're incorporating on your mind in your mindset? What are some things that you're incorporating in your daily routine? What are some things that you're using to grow your spirituality? And you don't got to believe in what I believe in, but be connected. Sit, take some time to be still. Take some time to be present. Take some time if you just want to be in the sun. If you just want to go out, take some time to for, for mindfulness. Take some time for gratitude. Take some time to set your intentions for the day. How do I want this day to look? What do I want to conquer in this day? How do I want to feel? Who do I want to be? What level do I want to perform on? What do I want the perception to be? How do I want to look 24 hours from now? Right? Daily, daily things define you become permanently. Are you taking 15 to 20 minutes to exercise? We're all a part of this Club Fit Challenge. If you haven't, it's okay. Clubfitchallenge.com, right? Um, what are you doing daily for your exercise? Listen, I was telling one of my friends the other day because she is like the bomb.com and she's, I actually hired her to help me take my uh, branding and my businesses to the next level. But she was just like, I cannot fit time in for a workout. I said, girl, that's a lie from the pits of hell. That is a lie. That is a lie. I was like, mm -mm. I said, girl, you gonna get up and do some jumping jacks and shame the devil today. I said, you're going you to get up and roll your arms in the shower and shame the devil today. I said, because it is so much easier than what you think, but it's what your, what your meaning you're giving to it. What meaning are you giving to that? See, a lot of times we think, oh, well, I have to have, I have to go do you, do a workout like yours. No, comparison is the thief of all joy, baby. So whether it's you doing 15 jumping jacks, 15 squats, 15 little arm things, like, you could, you could exercise. It's just moving your body. It's the range of motion is 15 minutes. It could be 10 minutes. It could just be while you're in the shower doing leg lifts, doing some little arm rolls. Doing, what? I'm not going to recommend doing jumping jacks in the shower, but yes, your girl's definitely done squats in the shower. Okay. The little arm rolls to get the little thing right here, girls, you know what I'm talking about to get the little things out right at the arm. And we doing the, the little arm rolls. Yep, I'm gonna do that in the shower too if I don't got no time. I, I'm listen. I'm gonna get this body moving. I'm 37. The bones is not how they used to be. I'm, I'm gonna make sure we we get this flexibility moving. Okay, you you got You gotta move your body. Whatever that looks like. We can all commit to 15, 20 minutes. Again, what you're doing daily defines who you're becoming permanently. What does that look like for you? What are you affirming over your life? See. I don't necessarily, people want to be like, oh, well, my faith is different. So I don't, okay, fine. But what are you declaring over your life? What are you, what are your daily affirmations look like? What are, what are you declaring over your business? What are you declaring over your family? What are you declaring over your fitness? What are you declaring over your fortune? What are you declaring over the, this season in your life, this season in your business? What, what does that look like? What are, what are you affirming? Like speak life into your life speak life into your life. Um, 
What are you doing every day that are income producing activities? So again, when we're talking about mindset, affirmations, taking some time for you to set your intentions for the day, taking some time for you to do some gratitude journaling, think of some things that you're thankful for, right? What are you expecting in the season? Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles, but being grateful for what you have makes room for what is coming. So take some time for both. You're prospecting. What does that look like? Are you taking time to prospect? Even if all you're doing is nine by nine, everybody can do nine by nine. That is hitting up nine people by 9 a.m. or nine people by 9 p.m. And nine people by 9 p.m. It could be five prospects, four teammates. It could be four teammates, five prospects. It could be three, three, and three. It could be three customers, three teammates, three new prospects you hitting up every single day. Whatever works for you, but just set these little daily micro goals because the momentum, it is not created, it is generated. And the micro goals that we're setting are meant to generate the momentum that you need to take care of the macro goal, to accomplish those bigger goals that it is that we need. So what are you doing daily that you want to implement permanently? Think about that in every aspect. Are you taking time to just call a family member and say, hey, I love you? Are you taking time to just send a text and be like, hey, just checking in. How's your heart doing today? Hey, just checking in. How's your mental health? Hey, just checking in. How are the babies? Whatever that looks like for you, right? But taking taking time for your faith, taking time for your fitness, taking time for your family, taking time for your fortune, taking time for your fun. What are you doing for fun? Celebrate. Like, I, I'm going to tell you one thing is about me. I'm going to have some fun. I work hard, but I play harder. Work like a captain, party like a pirate all day. Okay. I'm going to have some fun. So make sure you have some fun too. Don't underestimate what you can do daily because, again, what you do daily defines who you become permanently. Are you guys getting some value from this? Y'all good? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I know this is not our usual. I'm in the car, but y'all get me. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all cracking up at my little arm rolls. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So have a habit. The quality of your practice determines the caliber of your performance. Let's say that again. The quality of your practice determines the caliber of your performance. So when I talk about peak performance and being at a peak performance state, it's always getting your body to be at that peak performance state. It's making sure that you're up that you are about, right? But understand that having a habit is key. It takes 21 days to form those habits, but the quality of our practice determines the caliber of our performance. So what are some of those habits that you're like, hey, you know what? I'm incorporating this on a daily basis. Tell me. Write it in the chat. What are some of those habits? Yes, yes. Make sure you're sending it to all panelists and attendees. Absolutely. So some of those habits can be like what we're talking about, personal development, being committed to Kanai, constant, never-ending improvement. Yes, Verda, meditation. Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. Absolutely. Exercising is a great habit. Listening to a positive audio, absolutely, Suheni. Gratitude journaling, gratitude earth um, exercise, exercising, moving your body, implementing those habits. It can also, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a new habit. Doing your Spanish courses, I love that, Delisa. What are other things? There's a really great app called Productivity. It is so so good. Yes, Mitchie, in exercising, I love it. I love it. Working out for 45 minutes. PD, motivationals, reaching out to new people, eating one healthy meal a day, weekly journal writing. I love it. I love it. These are so good. Reading more books, gratitude first thing in the morning. Absolutely. Working out every morning. I love it. I love it. I love all of these because again, the quality of our practice determines the caliber of our performance. 
So if we're saying discipline is doing what I was called to do, even when I don't feel like doing it, how we do that is by, yes, being mindful of resting. Yes, by not underestimating what we're doing daily, but also having habits that are serving us, forming good habits, because it, that's when it becomes a part of our lifestyle. That is when we're saying, hey, you know what? These are the things that are serving me. And I will tell you that also we need to make a great habit. And this is something that I've made a good habit. I've, I'm learning to make a habit. And, and I said, this is a habit that I am going to make in 2023. And I started it in 2022 because of just where I was at. I needed to immediately shift everything. And one of those things is for every negative thing that comes into my mind, I am going to reinforce it with three positive things right away. And I don't care how retarded it may sound. I'm going to reinforce it right away because I've noticed that what I'm giving meaning to, what it is that I'm focusing on. And we can make something so, so big and we can make something so, so big out of something that's so, so small. But then at the same time, we can make something so, so small that we think is so, so big that we think. So it's like, how can I diminish that problem? How can I get to an actual solution is by me not giving it any value is by me not giving it any meaning. So a habit that I'm saying, hey, you know what? I am going, I am a master at my emotions. I am a, a powerful mother warrior i am i am that like i am one of one and these are things that it's like again repeating speaking life over your life right speaking life over your life but it's also saying you know what the quality of my practice is going to determine the caliber of my performance and i gotta stay ready so i don't ever gotta get ready and it's not saying that bad things are not going to happen it's not saying that you're not gonna get phone calls you don't want and you're not gonna deal with people cutting you off and you're not gonna deal with the Karens of the world, okay? We're all gonna deal with it, but it's how we're responding to it. It's what we're doing with that. And it's practicing those good things that are going to serve us. It's practicing those daily habits. It's saying, hey, you know what? I can change anything. I can change any situation if I can change my thoughts. I can change the way this looks if I change the way that I look at it. I can change how big this problem may seem if I can take away the meaning that it has. If I am no longer looking at it from the perspective that it's not serving me. So I'm going to look at it from the perspective of how can I use this to grow? How can I use this to bless more people? How can I use this to impact other people's lives? How can I use this to get me to the next level in my business? How can I use this to get rid of the things that do not serve me and allow this to serve me? Because everything comes to promote me. So how can I utilize this too? And it's also reframing our mindset too. So that's another habit that we can incorporate and it's saying, hey, you know what? When anytime something happens, I'm going to, I'm going to pause really quick. I'm going to, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pause really quick. And here's why, because whatever can be transformed, it will be transmitted. If, if something, if you can't transform your energy, it's going to transmit. And sometimes you don't want to give that energy because if that energy is not serving you, it's like, why, 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 why even give it out? So it's like, Whatever is not transformed, you know it's going to be transmitted. So you're knowing that it's like, listen, I'm as I, if there's anything that I've realized in my life's journey is like God never lets hard work go unnoticed. And yes, energy is contagious. And as you get still, God shows up. Like as you show up, He shows out. And it's knowing that you're the right attitude is always having an attitude of gratitude, but it's always having that attitude of expectancy. And there's always that is knowing that it's like, listen, like I, I am, I am one of his favorite children and anything that I touch is going to prosper in his name. And he's always going to be for me, but it's also, it's like, he's going to give us free will. Right. So now that we know better, we have to do better. 
And a lot of times it's like people trip me out because they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm being, I'm such a good person and I'm doing, and I'm, and I, and I, and I pray and I do this and I do that. And I was like, okay, so wh- how are you like, what are you doing to like serve your community? Like uh, what, what, what defines a good person? What are you, what are you, what value are you giving into the world? Cause really and truly like what value are you adding? Cause the quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of value that you're adding into other people's lives. So if you're not actually working your business and that's why it tells you faith without works is dead because it requires a certain level of umph. It requires a certain level of work. Like it's net work marketing. You can't skip the work. You can't skip the work. And when you know your worth, when you know your worth and you know what, what freedom is worth to you, and when you're crystal clear on that calling, because it always comes back to that, you're going to be like, I don't care to do the work because I know my worth, right? So, again, just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I hope this is really, 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 really great um, for you guys. Um, it's always a pleasure to serve you guys. And I will tell you that one of the greatest attributes of a leader is discipline. And as we make it a part of our lifestyle, it's like discipline is the fuel for our vision. And it's really the bedrock of a committed team. And you will find a lot of times that the leaders who lack discipline, they may have short-term success, but they rarely have long-term legacy. And really that is what it's about. And you'll see that a lot of the top of the top people in this industry and in the world that have a long-term legacy is because they didn't take any shortcuts and a lot of times it's not taking it's not only you know making these habits and being disciplined and forming these habits in our income producing activities but it's also what's going on here it's also what's going on here because when you know that you can achieve anything it's really bridging the gap from what's here to here and bridging that disconnect and it's that disconnect is you it's what you're telling yourself it's what you're choosing to believe day in and day out what you're speaking over your life what are you subscribing to because when you know that you know it's a go right (gasps) breakfast has been served it's your girl always a pleasure thank you guys so much for tuning in happy thriving thursday blessings on blessings let's get it Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. God bless you.